What is the Wilson memo? Who's involved? Is it important? And is it real? That's what we're going to discuss in this video. Hi, guys. I'm Patrick with Vetted. Let's jump in. All right. The Wilson memo is, quite simply put, a leaked document that came out in 2019. We're going to discuss how it got leaked, who leaked it. Got some clips of that. Uh, but basically, it's a memorandum uh, between Dr. Eric Davis. Okay. We're going to find out a little bit more about him. Um, and a meeting that he had. Okay described his meeting he typed it up describing his meeting with admiral thomas wilson in 2002 when he was looking into the possible existence of crashed retrieved ufos uaps in 1997. okay this document was leaked back in 2019 and is now part of the official congressional record since early 2022 and can be downloaded via congress gov that is true here it is right here i'm going to put links to all of this guys so you'll be able to see this whole document again i'm gonna make a video just reading this just this so you can get it all because it is fascinating and i've got a better one to read uh, if you just want to read it um that's a lot easier to read but look this is the things that are discussed in it are absolutely fascinating Right. They're talking about crash retrievals, aliens. They do say that alien abductions are not real. So does that help or not with this? I don't know. But let's do a deep dive. First of all, who is Admiral Thomas Wilson? OK, his his career speaks for itself. Yes, I'm going to put a link uh, to his Wikipedia so you can see that. Um, but at the time of this meeting, OK, in 02, he was freshly retired as a director of the DIA, and Dr. Davis is a renowned scientist who has worked as an astrophysicist and aerospace engineer for the DOD, NASA, and as a Pentagon consultant. I'll also put a link to his resume as well and to this Reddit page that I found that had some great stuff about this with, like, no views on this. It's, it's absolutely insane. Um, but... Dr. Eric Davis. Okay. This guy, if you remember, um, he. Let's watch this video. Exclusive news today, which is that the UFOs Commission, basically within the Pentagon, will be giving some findings and reportings to the Senate Intelligence Committee. This unit is inside the Office of Naval Intelligence. Now, Senator Marco Rubio saying that it's important for the public in order to find out more. But the real bombshell here is actually an interview in the New York Times by a man named Eric Davis. He's an astrophysicist who worked on the subcontractor and a consultant for that program since 2007. Now, Mr. Davis had this to say. He now works for Aerosport, Aerospace Corporation. He said he gave a classified briefing to the Defense Department agency as recently as March about retrievals from, quote, off-world vehicles not made on this earth. So, what? There you go. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay, so, yes, that's Eric Davis, okay? I'm going to put a link to a National Review article as well that talks a little more in depth about it. Again, there's a ton of links on this video, so you can really do a deep dive on this Wilson memo. Uh, but it's fascinating. So, all right. So, oh, my goodness. All right. Um, Dr. Eric Davis also worked on OSAP. Okay, that was a UAP investigation task force, right? The The advanced aerospace weapons systems identify i don't know right all these acronyms uh same as uh, it was right before uh a tip and after the uap task force and then after arrow so it's like four back right got dr sean kirkpatrick who runs arrow you had david grush who was part of um the uap task force then you had Lou Elizondo, who headed up ATIP, and then you had OSEP headed up by Colm Kelleher, right? So Eric Davis worked with him. He's also worked Skinwalker Ranch, all those sorts of things. But bombshell, right? He's already claimed off-world vehicles. Why is that important? Well, again, the Wilson doc, this is a meeting that he had, right, 
with Admiral Wilson, who basically claimed like, I tried to get access to these special programs and I couldn't get access to them and why, right? And then he finds out that there's a lot going on. UFOs, crash retrievals, all of this stuff. Now he's saying this to Eric Davis in the back of a car, okay? And Eric Davis is just taking notes. He's, he's like, I'm not gonna use this. I'm not going public with it just for my own research, right? Now, it's important to note that Admiral Wilson has completely denied this meeting ever took place. Now, we're going to take a look at a clip of what Eric Davis thinks of this memo, right? Now, there was a video posted about the basement office um, that included an interview with Eric Davis, and originally it had a part about him answering about the Wilson memo, but it got taken down. It's nowhere to be found, right? I found it. So I'll put a link to this so you'll be able to see it yourself. So this is Eric Davis's response to the Wilson memo. I want to bring up, uh, before because we're pressed for time, tell me about the Admiral Wilson uh, transcript. I can't discuss that. You can't discuss I'm not at liberty to discuss it. Because you're all over the... Oh, I know. All over it. Yeah. They were leaked out of Ed Mitchell's uh, estate, and there's nothing I can say about it. I mean, can you speak to the veracity of them? No, I can't. I can't address that at all. I won't answer any questions on the Admiral Wilson notes. You don't want to speak to at least whether these are... You know, they're purportedly classified information. I can't... I'm not at liberty to confirm or or uh, uh, verify any aspect of those notes. And, uh, you know, when you have security clearances, that's something you don't want to violate because the Department of Justice under the Obama administration and has continued under the Trump administration policies is they will vigorously prosecute anybody with security clearances who will go out of the way to discuss any uh, classified information that got leaked or released into the public illegally, so, or through other means. Okay. Uh, well, so I just can't I can't address those notes in any form or fashion. So uh, Canadian Grant Cameron uploaded 15 pages of documents, allegedly notes taken by Dr. Eric Davis in 2002. So whoever this Grant Cameron is, are you familiar with who this person is? Oh, I used to know him. Yeah, he's a Canadian UFO investigator. He doesn't investigate UFO phenomena. What he investigates is uh, his big claim to fame was investigating the pre U.S. president's role in the UFO history. Where did he get these 15 pages from? I don't know. I've never seen what whatever the pages are that he has. I haven't seen those. Like here is a, what appears to be a, a letter to you from a Will Miller. Uh, okay. Um, All right. Well, he uploaded it, but I can't address any of it, so. All right. So is that a yes, these are real? These are true? I won't, uh, I won't give you an answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. That's interesting, right? Again, you cannot find this video on YouTube. I'll put a link to this um, so you can watch this for yourself. It was original on YouTube, but they pulled it down. Why? I don't know. Um, that's, I bet Eric Davis asked him to, but that's interesting, right? Why deny that? Why deny or confirm that that's what it is? Now, how did it get leaked? We'll discuss that in a moment. This is on Project Unity. I found this. It says, breaking news, Chris Mellon confirms Eric Davis authored the Wilson notes. That's quite a bombshell, right? Well, let's find out. And so, on Christmas Eve, Christopher Mellon writes an article that has been published on his website. And in this article, he states the following. Even before this whistleblower legislation was signed into law, credible individuals were providing Congress information alleging that the U.S. government has recovered extraterrestrial technology. This process began in 2018 when I brought astrophysicist Dr. Eric Davis to Capitol Hill to meet with staff from the Senate Intelligence and Armed Services Committee. Dr. Davis, author of the famous Wilson Davis memo, provided specific information lending credence to sensational reports that an official U.S. government program is actively seeking. 
All right, so that's the bomb, right? Like Chris Mellon, you know who he is if you don't, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, okay, from the Mellon family, seen him all over the place. Um, he's basically saying he's the author of that memo, right? He's confirming it. Now, if you noticed in that clip with uh, Dr. Eric Davis, he says, I can't confirm, but he never says or deny, right? That, that's important. Let's see. Let's see what he says again about that. No. You can't I'm not at liberty to discuss it. Because you're all over the. Oh, I know. All over it. Yeah. They were leaked out of Ed Mitchell's uh, estate. And there's nothing I can say about it. I mean, can you speak to the veracity of them? Is no, it... I can't. I can't address that at all. I won't answer any questions on the Admiral Wilson notes. You don't want to speak to at least whether they're, these are... You know, they're purportedly classified information. I can't... I'm not at liberty to confirm or, or uh, uh, verify any aspect of those. He says confirm or verify. He doesn't say confirm or deny. Uh, anyway, I think that's an important note to remember. Anyway, okay, so we got more, y'all. Um, I apologize. This is going to be a long video, but stay with me here, okay? All right, now let's take a look at this video of Richard Dolan. It's an unlisted video, okay? So you won't be able to find it just Google searching on YouTube. You're gonna actually have to have the link, which I found. It's only got 207 views, y'all, okay? But this is important. This is Richard Dolan talking about this particular memo before it was ever leaked, okay? In 2019, this got leaked, okay? But it was talked about by a few people beforehand. Um, again, we're going to get into how it leaked. I got We got an interview with the guy that, that leaked it, and we got some more stuff. So anyway, let's watch this. Tried to meet with Congress. That didn't go very well. We also tried to meet with some other senior people. This other source, totally independent of Greer, described a lot of this to me. I didn't know who the person was. When Greer's book came out, he described exactly this meeting and mentioned this man's name, Admiral Thomas Wilson. I go back to my source and I said, is this the guy? My source said, yes, this is the guy. Well, here's what happened. Dr. Greer and Edgar Mitchell both go to meet with Admiral Wilson to describe this, the existence of deep black programs within the Defense Department, uh, special access programs, several of which dealt with extraterrestrial technology, which were described as rogue organizations beyond government control. Okay, and according to what Greer said, Wilson got very upset about this, tried looking into it, and was denied access to those programs. Now, Wilson was head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff at that time. Um, okay, so that's the story that Greer had. Well, that actually is exactly the story that my source gave me. I uh, asked Edgar Mitchell, is this basically true? Mitchell did not want to talk a lot about this, but did confirm that they had the meeting. I called Wilson myself. I found him and phoned him last fall, last winter. I s found him and said, well, I'm a historian. I'm looking into things, and your name came up. I'd like to talk with you. I didn't want to blindside him as a UFO guy, but I figured he wouldn't want to talk to me if he knew beforehand. So I asked him. I said, look, I'm researching UFOs, and your name has come up in this statement by Stephen Greer. And Wilson, who started out the conversation in a very genial way, very convivial and relaxed so real quick the wilson memos right it's about they're talking about a meeting that happened five years prior 1997 so the wilson and davis meeting is 2002 but they're talking about a meeting from 1997 right where greer edgar mitchell and mr wilson are discussing this and they're telling him Greer and Mitchell are telling him about these programs and Wilson then goes and looks and gets denied access to this stuff that's the big part of it okay so his voice got very high pitched he got very upset I could tell he said well yeah I did have the meeting I mean my memory is foggy I, I... so he's he's going to acknowledge that he had the meeting with Greer and Mitchell but not with Davis I vaguely remember such a thing um, I have to go and, and basically ended the conversation and would, he did not he said it's all poppycock poppycock so uh, 
I mean, I can't expect him to just give away the game. I When I phoned him, I had... There you go. All right, so, again, I'm going to put links to all of this, okay, guys? You guys can check all this stuff out and see what it's about. All right, now, James Rigney, he's the man behind the Admiral Wilson leaks. All right, so he and another family member of Edgar Mitchell, after he passed away, they were going to throw... Edgar Mitchell's family was going to throw away all these documents and stuff that he had, but they were able to go in and save them, and they found this, and they leaked it. So let's hear from the guy who got these documents out to the public. And again, this is from Project Unity. Um, great stuff. I got another clip from him. Really enjoying uh, this guy's uh, YouTube channel. So subscribe to if you haven't already. All right, let's jump in. My role in the release of the documents, um, well, in short, through a highly unlikely series of events, I was responsible for the Wilson Davis documents finding their way into the public arena. How did this happen? Um, I could probably summarize this by saying that for a long time, I was very active in the US space community and I would make frequent trips from Australia to the US to attend conferences and the like. Uh, at one of these conferences around 2013, um, I met and formed a close relationship with someone whose name I unfortunately can't disclose at his request, um, but who I later learned had developed a very close personal friendship with many of the legendary astronauts, and in particular, the Apollo 14 moonwalker, Dr. Edgar Mitchell. Uh, now, when Edgar Mitchell passed away unexpectedly in February of 2016, uh, my friend was invited by Dr. Mitchell's immediate family to assist in helping disperse his estate. Um, to my friend's surprise, much of Edgar's belongings and documents, which were not of monetary value, were actually going to be dumped. Uh, so with the assistance of one member of Edgar's family, uh, many of his papers and work was thankfully saved and archived into my friend's care. Now, I was fully aware that this was all going on at the time, but I was unaware of what was to follow because sometime after Edgar's funeral, I was contacted by my friend to discuss some of the documents in his position that actually referenced UFOs. Um, my friend was not a UFO guy, but he knew that by... 2018, this was my main field of interest. Uh, this telephone conversation resulted in my asking if I could actually get access to these documents, to which he readily agreed. So this resulted in two lengthy and costly trips to his home over the next 12 months, uh, during which time I was able to copy a number of documents that looked to be of interest, and among these were the Wilson Davis notes. He later agreed to let me release a few of these documents publicly, as long as his name was kept out of it, which I have always honored. Now, that leads me to believe, he just said it, there is more to that, right? So there's probably more to his notes, more to be released. Will it ever be, will it ever be released? I don't know. Um... Now, this is another person, Oak Shannon, who has a connection to the Wilson leaks. Okay, uh, again, another Project Unity clip. He's a Oak Shannon is a former manager of Special Projects Los Alamos National Lab, U.S. Navy veteran and a nuclear physicist. All right, Los Alamos. We know what that is. Here we go. And so, for the sake of clarification, I think it's important that we just get your side of this on the record. So I would just like to be able to ask you, first of all, whether or not you personally know Dr. Eric W. Davis. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't work with him uh, day in and day out, but I did work with him. I, I know him fairly well. May I ask how you uh, first got to know him? Uh, in mutual projects, uh, mm -hmm. mutual acquaintances, uh, meetings, things of that sort. And do you personally know Admiral Thomas R. Wilson? Yes, I do. But a big, again, uh, I know him, and of course I know of him. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I, I read 
somewhere that his response was oak who <laughs> And I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and, you know, as I mentioned to you, I, I consider myself eminently forgettable. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I'm sure that uh, my memory of him is, is stronger than his memory of me because mm -hmm. he's, he became a, a flag officer. I went off and did weird things on top of a, a Mesa in New Mexico. So, uh, and uh, so I would expect uh, that he would he would not remember me as well as I remember him. Real quick, L. Keen, Leslie Kane, right there. Anyway, did um, did Admiral Wilson get in contact with you in two thousand and one or two thousand and two, inquiring into the background and overall trustworthiness of Doctor Eric Davis? Uh, earlier than that. Was it earlier than uh, that? My apologies. Yeah. No, it's um. Well, we were we moved to. Uh, Florida in 2000 and Linda is listening in the background so she can yell at me and tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> hey Linda. 2001? 2001. Um, I had had a heart attack uh, and had actually died on the ICU table. TW is Wilson, right? Admiral Wilson. Um, and, and I had my own out-of-body experience, by the way. Yes, I, I want to talk to you about that a little bit later on. Absolutely. Um, but, um, I was eventually uh, forced to retire medically because I, I could not get back in the saddle, uh, even remote, uh, work. Um, and I was at home, I was had several complications out of that experience, out of that problem, uh, kept recurring, uh, over the months. This was in like May of 99, honey. Yeah. yeah. May of 99. Um, and throughout the summer, I was having these other problems being cropped up uh, for that. And, and so I was at home. Actually, I was actually writing, uh, trying to write a novel about the destruction of the Twin Towers. Uh, and this was in 1999. Uh, I had to trash that when, the, when it actually happened. Wow. Uh, but um, that's crazy. I got this phone call. Uh, and it was from uh, Admiral Wilson. And he asked me, now, this was not a short conversation. I, you know, I, I was recuperating. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to carry on this conversation on the phone. But I... EWD is Eric W. Davis. It will do much else at that point. Um, and we had a discussion. And one of the things he wanted to know was, could he trust... Um, Eric Davis. And I think he may have even mentioned Hal Putoff um, and one or two other people. And um, I, I mentioned that, yes, I believe that, that Eric Davis was an honorable and, and conscientious scientist uh, and that he would honor any, any restrictions the Admiral might put on him. Uh, and I, I thought it would be safe for him to contact him. Did he uh, did he say at all why he was seeking that background information during during your conversation? No, he really didn't. No, but you did. Not um, to my memory. Not right, to my memory. Right. I do not recall that he's. All right, so I'm gonna put a, a link to the rest of that. But this just adds to the validity of this, right? Wilson trying to deny um, this, but right, he's clearly looking into this and wants to find out from Eric Davis maybe if he knows more, right? So this is all very interesting. Again, there's so many, it's a web here, guys. Uh, so it's a lot to take in, um, right? There's just so much to take in. All right, so now we're gonna watch uh, a couple clips from Ross Coltart and Richard Dolan uh, recently on the theories of everything with Kurt. Uh, great podcast, again, check these out and the full interviews if you want, but let's dive into this with Ross Coltart. When do let me know what you think of Stephen Hawking's favorite places. Okay, this question comes from Poop Dig. What does he think? I know. <laughs> what does he think of Admiral Wilson? I mean, why does he think Admiral Wilson docks are legit? And I believe you've explained this in your in plain sight. But if you can give it to people yeah. who haven't read uh, that I, book. actually, actually, if he reads my book, 
he would see that I concede at the end of my analysis of the Admiral Wilson documents that we cannot reach any conclusion about them until and if either Tom Wilson or Eric Davis concedes that the documents are a real account of a real conversation. Um, I do believe that there is a strong body of evidence to suggest that the provenance of the documents is very, very solid. And uh, I write about a guy to whom I give the pseudonym in my book, The Spaceman. And uh, he was a very, very close friend of um, Edgar Mitchell. And it turned out when he got to know me, he confided that he was the custodian of Edgar Mitchell's private UFO archives. And um, he allowed me access to those archives. And in those archives is the original of the Admiral Wilson document that was leaked out onto the web in about 2018. And uh, that was done by a good friend of mine here in Australia, James Rigney, who passed it on to Grant Cameron and and we heard from uh, James Rigney earlier, right? Richard Dolan. Uh, so I'm very sure of the provenance of the Admiral Wilson document. It now, that doesn't mean that what's in the document is real, what they're talking about, right? Just the validity of the conversation actually taking place. And supposedly it took place at the back of a car, right? Just having a conversation. Um, so. From Edgar Mitchell's estate. And I'm also very sure that it was written by Dr. Eric Davis, a man for whom I have an enormous amount of respect. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the document was faxed by Dr. Hal Putoff to Edgar Mitchell, because Edgar Mitchell was on the science advisory board for the National Institute of Discovery Science, which was the private science investigative body that was investigating the paranormal for Bob Bigelow, the aerospace and real estate entrepreneur. And I've also done an analysis of the comments made by all of the people who are parties, if you like, to the provenance of the document. And None of them. You would think, let me put it this way. If you were Eric Davis and people were circulating a document that purports to be Eric Davis's notes of his alleged conversation with Admiral Tom Wilson, the immediate past director of the Defence Intelligence Agency, in a car park, ironically, the car park of EG&G, you couldn't get more spooky than that, you know, the EG&G company in Las Vegas. And they're discussing a covert aerospace company's concealment on behalf of certain elements of the US government and intelligence establishment of retrieved alien technology and how it's been kept secret from the US public for so many years. You would expect that such a wild, wacky conspiracy theory would be immediately denied by a man with a security oath to protect and, you know, a need to be seen to be a, a loyal patriot of America. You know, you wouldn't want false rumours to be being disseminated on your name. But what has Eric Davis done? If anything, in an interview with Stephen Greenstreet on The Basement, which for some perverse reason Greenstreet took down, Eric Davis... Uh, but we got it, right? We saw it. I got it for you guys. That was not easy to find. Let me tell you, it took me hours to find that. Made a number of admissions that I thought were quite pertinent to this, and I write about them in the book. Um, Tom Wilson, of course, Admiral Tom Wilson, in a letter to me, has adamantly denied that any such conversation took place. But on analysis, at the end of all of it, whilst I say I cannot rule out the possibility that the document is real and that it records a valid conversation and possibly real events. Because I can't get anybody on the record to prove the document, to, to establish that it is a genuine record of essentially a truthful conversation and that that truthful conversation records actual facts, actual reality, not disinformation. Um, I'm not prepared to assert that the Admiral Tom Wilson memo is for real. Which I understand, 
but it is interesting dr davis's response to it right because if it was just absolute bs he would just flat out say that's nonsense what are you talking about right and in fact the best way to get him to do that is to throw just some crazy thing at him like hey we heard you were talking to so and so at this diner whatever you know just make something up and have him deny it and then ask him the other thing and why wouldn't he deny it right that would be the best way to get dr eric davis to acknowledge it would be that way right does that make sense what i'm saying Leave me a comment if you agree with that. That's what I would do. Anyway, all right. Again, I'm going to put links to all of this. You can watch all of this, okay? Uh, and he, Ross goes on to talk more about it, but we got to move on. Richard Dolan. You heard from him earlier. Remember that link uh, to him talking about it. He talked to Admiral Wilson as well. So we're going to end on this right here for this video. The so-called meetings took place in at yeah, the time and so on and so on. Right. Okay. So... There's that. Yeah, right. Wilson has to do that. I'm sorry, but he has to do that. And and for people who still doubt this, look, he, he's saying that Wilson has to deny it. How could he not deny it? Right. Same way with Eric Davis. But the difference is Wilson is denying, it, saying I deny it completely. And Eric Davis saying I can't comment on that. Now, Dr. Eric Davis is still working with the government. Admiral Wilson is retired. Is that the reason? Interesting. I mean, you heard from Oak Shannon. Clearly, he, clearly Oak Shannon talked to Admiral Wilson, knows him, right? He asked about Eric Davis. So why would Admiral Wilson just be denying all this? It's just, it's very interesting. I think he just feels like, oh, I don't want to get involved with this. Way too much to put together. And I, would, I tell him to go to an article by Juliana Marinkovic, who actually put together all of the statements and all of the evidence about this long before this thing leaked out in 2019. Statements by Edgar Mitchell, for example. Uh, so this is the story, this is what happened. And we know this, all of this happened. I talked about Admiral Wilson back in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, because I knew about this back then. So what happened is this is- a We saw that video from 2007. Again, that's an unlisted video. Don't try to Google search it, just use my link and you'll find it. It's the only way to get to it. It is an unlisted video on YouTube. In April, this is the true story. In April 1997, Dr. Stephen Greer, who's a UFO researcher, he's making the rounds in DC. And Greer is trying to talk to anyone in DC and in, in positions of power who are willing to listen to him about what he considered to be uh, runaway black budget programs dealing with ET tech beyond the purview, beyond the control of the United States government. But Greer believed that they were rogue programs. And he actually had uh, the code name of, uh, I think, at least one of them. So he's going in. And, he, and because he's accompanied by astronaut Edgar Mitchell of Apollo 14, and also a Navy commander named Willard Miller, um, that got him enough cachet to get a meeting with Admiral Thomas Wilson, who at the time was deputy head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. This is April 1997. So they get a meeting and Wilson actually is not alone there. He's, in, he's with his boss, who's General Pat Hughes, who was uh, one step above him. And there was another Admiral, I can't remember that Admiral's name offhand. So they, they have this meeting and Greer gives his presentation, meeting ends and uh, Miller, Navy commander stays behind and talks to Wilson for a little while and they talk about UFOs. Uh, there's, a, there's an interview with Greer and Miller from, I think, 2013, where they actually talk about this meeting in a limited way, but they were like, oh yeah, I remember this. And Wilson's like, yes, hold the next meeting, hold the next meeting, I wanna talk, I wanna talk to these guys. And he kept canceling the new meetings. It's, this, it's a YouTube video and you can hear them discussing this. Uh, but anyway, so Miller and Wilson talk about this after the fact, they're talking and they talk about UFO. I could not find that video, y'all. So if somebody can put a link in the comments to that, that would be great. What Wilson said to Greer was that he would look into this. And, uh, and he did. Uh, so for the next two months, he gets advice from different people in the Pentagon, including former Secretary of Defense William Perry, who just retired from that position. And he goes through uh, a group known as Austad, and within that called SAPOC, that Special Access Program, Oversight Committee, SAPOC. And he finds out that within that, within those 
special access program. These are black budget programs that have little to no oversight that nested within one and within that one and then within that one, like so within one, within another, within another, he found what he believed he was looking for. And he called, he actually makes a phone call to the program manager of this. It's a private contractor. It's probably Lockheed Martin. And he says, you have a program that seems to deal with a subject that I need to have oversight over and you are negligent because you don't have, because I'm not overseeing this. You know, Wilson was again, deputy head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs and he thought he had, he thought he had oversight. He was wrong, he didn't. So the program manager says, uh, I'll get back to you. Let me talk to my colleagues and we'll see what we do. <laughs> so he gets back to him, he says, well, we're, we're not gonna have a phone conversation but you can meet with us. And Wilson flies out. Yes, I know Wilson has said he's never went out there. Uh, so, uh, well, actually Wilson, Wilson did not say that. Wilson said he never met with Eric Davis for the interview. But anyway, Wilson goes out and he meets with them. They tell him, yes, we're re reverse engineering an alien or a craft that is not made by human hands, not by, not by man, not of this world. And we've made painfully slow progress in understanding it. Wilson says, well, I want in. They're like, no, you're not coming in. He says, well, you're wrong. They show him a list of known as the bigot list, B-I-G-O-T, derived from World War II. It doesn't mean bigotry. It means something totally different. And the, that's a list of who's in and who's out or who's in. And it's roughly 500 people. And he notices they're all corporate contractors. Almost none of them are DOD people. And he says, well, I need in. And they're like, no, you're not coming in. Well, what are your criteria? Well, we don't have to tell you our criteria, except you're not in. Well, I'm going to go complain. I said, be our guest, complain, see, see what we'll see if we care. And uh, they actually said, the only reason we're meeting with you now is because we were nearly outed a few years ago during the Pentagon audit. And we had the auditor uh, nearly exposed us and we had to read him in. And we're, we're dealing with you. We've actually tightened our security measures since then. And it's true, William Perry did a total reorg of the DOD back in 1993 or 94. So um, anyway, so Wilson goes back and he does complain and he's threatened with his career and it pisses him off, but he's like, what can I do? So he's, he was told like, if you wanna complain, you will take an early retirement. You'll probably lose a couple of stars along the way and don't think about becoming head of DIA. So he played ball, he became head of DIA and then five years later he retires. And this is what happens in five years. In 2002, Eric Davis is, so, Mitch, so Mitchell was part of Greer's team, keep that in mind. So Edgar Mitchell knew about this. He had gotten feedback that Wilson went on his wild goose chase for two months. Wilson probably talked to Will Miller about this. That is my best guess. He might've talked to Mitchell about it as well. Mitchell reports back to his people. Who are his people? The NIDS people under Robert Bigelow. Mitchell was on the board. So was Putoff, so was Kit Green, so was Eric Davis, all of these people. They are all of them. What is their mission? Their mission is they wanna to get to the center of the labyrinth. That's all they wanna do. They, they have security clearances. They know, Kit Green's another one. They know a lot, but they don't know everything that they wanna know. That's, that's a fact. So they send, so they knew about this for five years through Mitchell. And in 2002, when Mitchell, when Wilson retired from the DIA, goes into private industry, it might have even been before he got hired by ATK, um, which is where he got hired. Davis, Eric Davis is sent out to interview Wilson. And yes, I know that Wilson denied being out there and I just, I don't believe him at all. Davis goes and he hits a home run interview. He sits with Wilson. He writes, 13 pages of notes that are typewritten, 13 pages. Wilson Davis, Wilson Davis. They're paraphrased notes, but they're detailed because that's how Davis is. He's a brilliant physicist. He's extremely detail oriented. Where I spoke to him. He might, he might have recorded it. He might have transcribed it just from notes. I don't know. So what does he do? He gives it to his colleagues in NIDS. He gives it to Green and Putoff and Mitchell and all those guys. In 2006, a long time ago, one of those people showed me those notes, okay? I was shown two pages or possibly three pages and I have never been able to figure out was it two or three. I was shown part of the transcript by one of those individuals and I, I will not and have not and will not give up his name because he's asked me not to. If he dies, 
I'll give up his name. Still alive. The point is, so yeah, it wasn't Mitchell because Mitchell did die. Uh, that means he's an older gentleman, more than likely. So who could that be? However, I was shown the part of the transcript explicitly where it said. I think it's how put off. Just that's my guess. Stuff was not made by man, not by human hands, was not of this earth. And by the way, in a, in a 2007 podcast I did with uh, the para, what was it called? Uh, Gene Steinberg's The Paracast. I actually was talking about this. And I didn't say that I had seen pages, by the way, because I didn't want to give that up either. But I actually didn't. I used the phrase, not made by man, not by human hands. I was, mm -hmm. I was referring explicitly to it. That's in a 2007 interview from July 1st, by the way. Someone can hunt that down. So anyway, I saw those pages. And, uh, but, you know, they stayed, they stayed um, hidden for years. And I talked about it for a few years and then I talked about it less and less. And I was like, I'd still, I'd still always talk about it. In, in the end of 2018, the interviewer, Jimmy Church asked me uh, what was the biggest story that I knew that I'd never really talked a lot about. And I, and I brought this up. And at that point, I mentioned that I was shown pages of a document. What I didn't know at that time was that they were actually circulating among the smallest handful of people at that time because Mitchell had died, uh, I think in early 2017. And when he died, um, and I still wanna be careful about how I describe this, but when he died, some of his papers were going to be t thrown into a dumpster that believe it or not. And someone very close to Edgar Mitchell said, no, please let me take them. And the member of the family said, fine, take them. So anyway, there's more to that. Again, I'll put links to all this so you can watch it. But this is quite fascinating. Um, so please, guys, tell me what you guys think in the comments. This is a long video. I apologize. Uh, but just the only way to cover this. Um, I try to keep the videos like 15 minutes or less, but there's just there's no way to cover all this. Um, again, I haven't even shown the full documents yet. Again, so I'm going to put out another video of just reading the Wilson memo. That's it. So you can combine these two videos. Watch one, then the other, watch this, then that one, however you want to do it. So, all right, guys, that's it on today's video and the Wilson memos. Follow all the links, do your own research. What do you think? Is this real? I personally do. I think it's real. I think it actually happened. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Uh, check out the video of the Wilson documents and see everything that's in there. It is quite fascinating. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Remember, every day's a gift. Peace.